Hi folks, in this nightcap we're going to talk about Patrick Kane. Will the Sabres ever make a realistic pitch to bring him home? Coming up. That's the question I put out there tonight guys. Will the Sabres realistically make a pitch to Patrick Kane and the Chicago Blackhawks of course? Maybe this year, that's why I'm saying and Chicago because I believe in the offseason he's going to listen to Buffalo when they call him. Next year, not this year. Will they make a pitch and try to get him, bring him home to Buffalo in his home city? It's a good question. So let's look at the clip here. Shout out goes to David Ridley. He goes, think you could make a video on a reported interest in signing Patrick Kane as UFA in 2023. Well, David, good topic because there is, there's a real split decision I find in the community. There is. And I think that if, if we were to get him, I wouldn't want to go higher than uh, three years. I wouldn't want to go higher because of his age. He'll be 34, uh, turning 35, I believe. So I wouldn't want to go higher than three years. Yes, I, I believe he'll, he'll play at a high level for those years still. Maybe, maybe one of them he might not. The last one, maybe, I'm thinking, maybe. Uh, I would go three years, six, six and a half. If we, if we sign him for 10, we're out of our minds and we deserve what we get because we're losing a player and we're not going to be near a Stanley Cup still. You know, we could be with him though. We could speed up the process a year is what I'm saying. We might be able to win a Stanley Cup in his last year in that contract by then. That would be like, you know, one year and then one, two, three. So in four years from now, it's possible. It is, it is possible. Now, should we make a pitch to get him? I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm on the fence with it. I am because I don't want to do anything to mess up. I will not, I would put it this way. I would not trade to get him for Dylan Cousins. One, one up. I wouldn't do it because we'll regret it. In the long run, we'll regret it. You know, like you, we've got to keep our main core young pieces that are first rounders secure. We got to keep those guys. And that might be something Chicago would want if we try to deal right now. Now, would I trade our next year's first round pick for him right now? 50% salary retained. I don't know. I'd be tempted. I'd be absolutely tempted, David. Absolutely tempted. Because I think we're talking about the playoffs all of a sudden. Just like that. Just like that, I believe. If things go into place, fall into place good, uh, we'd be a bubble team for sure. If we got Patrick Kane in the lineup this season, could we get him? Yeah, it's realistic. Yes. I always, guys, I'll always say where there's smoke, there's fire. Yes. There's been rumors way too long in Buffalo, way too long that, uh, and, and those rumors don't persist unless behind the scenes, people know the players interested also. So I think Patrick Kane would be open-minded to go into the Sabres for sure. I mean, what? It was his team growing up as a kid. Of course he would, you know? Be the logical conclusion to a Hall of Fame career. It would be. Going home. Now, people say, well, he's going to want to go to a contender. Please don't do that. Because you don't know what a guy's thinking. You just don't. You never know what a guy's thinking. To say he's going to want to play in Colorado, what legacy does he leave with that? That's not even his team. Whereas in Buffalo, in a few years, if he was part of a big run there, it would be, he'd be one of the main pieces. Why? Whereas in, in, in another city, it's just, he's just a complimentary star that's on, an, uh, on a, another team. So I, I can't, you know, like to say he, to pretend we know what he's thinking is what I'm saying. To pretend we know what he's thinking is kind of like, you know, me saying I understand how a woman feels when she's pregnant. I kind of do, <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean? I, you, you can't, you can't get into somebody's thinking, his psyche, what's going on. And I think uh, Patrick Kane would, I, I just believe because it's his favorite team growing up. I relate to that. I could have had, let's say a hall of fame career. Let's say I'm playing and, and it's the end of my career. And I'm thinking, God, the one thing I didn't accomplish, it was be a saber. You know, I've done everything in my career. I've won it all. And why not go home and be the hometown hero to close out my career that way? It just would make sense. There's no guarantee he goes to a powerhouse and wins. He knows that. He's a smart enough guy. He knows. There's no guarantee he goes to uh, 
any team, like the Rangers, and, and guaranteed a cup? No. That's just what the majority do, is they go to big market teams, you know, like Toronto, the Rangers, the Kings now are kind of in that conversation. I don't see the point, really, if I was him, to not at least consider going home where his family and friends are. It just, to me, makes, makes total sense. We hear players that do this quite often. So I would kind of lean that way. And I'd even lean on Jonathan Taze being a, a Winnipeg Jet eventually to close out his career at a very friendly cap number. Like, I don't think, I don't think Kane would be greedy enough and stupid enough to hurt the organization if he thinks, if he envisions that this team could win a cup in a few years with what we have, you know, we could win a cup in a few years. Right now, if we got this going, we could win a Stanley Cup. I think he would probably take a little bit of a home. That's where I think he'd take a home discount. Yeah, I do, because it is his home. And I could see him doing that. Now, let's not compare that to the Kachuk signing, because there, St. Louis had a block of time to get it done. That's all they had. Their cap didn't permit it, and their GM completely screwed up with the offer that he offered. <laughs> you know, like Scandella and Tarasenko, really St. Louis, and a first rounder. You thought that was going to bring over Kachuk, really? It could have done a little better, you know? If they are going to, if we're going to get uh, Kane to actually look at this, I think, you know what, it would come down to him and Kevin Adams having a conversation. Adams' favorite thing, guys. Adams must be a funny guy after he's had five or six beers, folks. I can imagine the things that comes out of this guy as he's talking. So what do you think? Are you for it or not? And let's not, let's stop with picking on the kid when, uh, when, it, when he was young, when he was really young, about the cab driver and everything. That's over and done with. My goodness. Are we going to hold like grudges like that? You know, really? I'm in the, uh, the way I look at it, guys, I'm in the red with God. You know, we all are. Nobody is watching this video hasn't screwed up in their life. Please. Nobody. Nobody. We've all screwed up somehow. Was it an extreme mistake? Yeah. But everybody makes mistakes and realizes later, you know, that he's wrong. And the other scandal that happened was, you know, it was never really, never came to fruition. Really, like, it, you know, there's things we'll never know, you know, sometimes. There's things we'll never know. But one thing I, I, I believe that, you know, I don't like to condemn somebody. I just don't like to judge like that. I don't think it's, I don't think it's the right way to go when it, it appears that he's a healthy player that he's changed and you know that the, that's his past now and he's a young man now you know and he's he's coming into his retirement in a few years and it doesn't make any sense for him to be still picked on years later or condemned for that that's the dumbest thing i think we could do you know so if we're gonna judge anything it's you know we'll know anyway with his off-ice antics it'll get around the city you guys know that I would say we got to look at him from this point on. What has he done as a hockey player? What could he bring to the Buffalo Sabres? Could he be a Stanley Cup piece if we get him next year? It would speed up the process again, I'll say. That's what I believe, David. It would speed up the process. At what cost? Are we going to be a team that just gets to the semifinals and never win a cup and then lose out the first rounder? Then it doesn't really matter in a way because rejuvenated fan base everybody's happy again we're healthy we still have prospects we're good we lost okay we lost out on this but at the same time the fans got their way with it i don't think we should do it though this year and that sucks because this is one of his prime years that are left so if we did it now at half retained yeah yeah we could figure it out we could you know we could just Maybe give up uh, Portillo, Johnson, a second rounder. I don't know. We'll have to see. Chicago's going to move him. I don't think he's going to play all year there because then they get nothing at the end of the year. They're going to move him. But I think first come, first serve right now is the way to go. And if we can get him on the team, I guarantee the whole fan base will be happy anyway. And we'll just figure it out, guys. Even if it's just for a few years, we'll figure it out. Not, not, not a bad idea to have a Hockey Hall of Famer on your team. You know, no matter what. 
All right, just my take on it. I'll leave it there, guys. That's it. That's it for tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I got to get these up to you. Got to get these uploaded. And I got a few video ideas tomorrow. I'm just dragging out my videos right now because I'm over hawking my brain at this point. See you tomorrow, guys.